It's a short 30 day session this year at the legislature and technically it's reserved for budget issues. <laughs> But lawmakers can use a mechanism to address other non-budget issues, and that is constitutional amendments. These usually face fewer roadblocks than regular, regular legislation, and they can go straight to voters if the legislature approves them. That's a big if. That avoids a veto by the governor. There are a slew of such amendments this year, covering issues such as legalizing marijuana, tapping the land-grant permanent fund for early childhood education programs, and creating an ethics commission. And Whitney, let me start with you. Some say these amendments are more responsive to the will of the people. We've heard that argument. California made that case back in the 90s. We saw what happened there. There are a number of interesting uh, uh, amendments on the docket here. Mm -hmm. First question, do you feel it's too many? Are people loading up here for, for nefarious reasons? Let's just clear that up right now. Are, are there issues with this for you right now? I don't, mm -hmm. the volume of it isn't, isn't that big of a, I mean, you can propose as many as you want. That's not the issue. The, right. the issue to me is whether or not it's good policy or bad policy to mm -hmm. be putting things in place in law that don't, that basically bypass um, our balance of power. They'd be, you know, mm -hmm. you put it before uh, the people to decide and they've got one paragraph or they've got two paragraphs to say how they feel about a subject, but then you don't take into account the effects on budget. Mm -hmm. How are you going to implement it? Yeah, how is it gonna affect one county from the next? Um, it's very, very difficult uh, mm -hmm. for if you put a ballot initiative like that um, in front of the people to say oh I like it or I don't like it but there's a whole slew of issues that come along with every single one of those decisions that then our elected officials have to figure out how to implement mm -hmm. that's why we have a governor that's why we have a Senate it's why we have a House of Representatives mm -hmm. it's why we have a legal system mm -hmm. um, so it just from the standpoint of it being good or bad policy I think it's very bad policy to initiate mm -hmm. any of these types of things that are coming up now um, in this manner fair enough Sophie you know I, we hear this a lot can't amend them. You know what I mean? It's part of the Constitution. You can't yeah. go back and do it. I mean, that's can't a very, it, can't tweak it. That's a very scary prospect I think, for some I folks. will say, yeah. I, I happen to believe that our federal Constitution is not amended enough. Many co countries amend them more, their constitutions mm -hmm. more often. Mm -hmm. um, I do see amendments come across the wire that seem like, okay, this feels more like legislation to me, right. less like an amendment. I do think it's uh, interesting and amusing. Um, Senator John Ryan has proposed in this in this last week, mm -hmm. uh, Senate Joint Resolution 17, which would change the requirement. Right now, a majority of legislators in the House and in the Senate um, are required to, to put an amendment in front of the voters. He would change it to a two-thirds vote, which is the same vote necessary to break a veto by the governor, which I think I'm not saying whether I love this or not, but I think what he's trying to do here is basically break the need mm -hmm. for an amendment by raising the bar so high that you might as well just get a veto proof uh, veto proof vote through it's it's an it's an interesting mm -hmm. it's well an I think the argument could be made is about whether or not any of these issues that are coming up now uh, you know as possible uh, constitutional mm -hmm. amendments mm -hmm. whether or not they really are good policy and have the support of the people of the state of New Mexico let's, if let's it take can't get the House that's and the legislature let's take and the governor that's an important let's take issue. marijuana legalization right off the top I'm going to stay with you Whitney wait on that one too Jerry Ortiz Pino, Senator uh, Ortiz Pino, has got his his amendment out there. Mm -hmm. Again, there's the winds of the times. There's other things that make it seem viable. Bad policy, good policy. And should the people be deciding on that? Well, I think it was uh, one of his uh, political operatives that was actually in Steve Terrell's blog stating that the reason that they're introducing this amendment is for the campaign season because it'll really excite the liberal base, basically help out with uh, candidates that are running from top to bottom in 2014. So that's already been discussed as a political maneuver on, on the legalization of marijuana. Let me hold you there and get Eric in on that one too. It's interesting, it's that's, it, that's, uh -huh. that's, that's the argument that everyone from the governor has trumped out on, on things like early childhood is only going to benefit liberal Democrats. Mm. Um, you know, so this, this idea that somehow these are political initiatives, this is not like the referendum process in California where you can collect lots of signatures. Right. This is the this is the legislative branch deciding by a major a majority of elected representatives, meaning it's not just a simple majority of elector, electors present, um, to decide to put something before them. God forbid we allow the electorate to say we think we, and by the way, on early childhood, it's 70% plus. Mm -hmm. One guy who happens not to be a Republican, John, Senator Jonathan Smith, mm -hmm. has not even allowed that to be heard. So as, as much as we would love our democratic system to work, sometimes a governor or a legislator can hold up basically the overwhelming majority mm -hmm. and will of the people. Mm -hmm. So I think 
Bring them on. I don't think any of these are, uh, we might disagree with them, are frivolous policy. Early child investing, early childhood education. Mm -hmm. Should we join other states in legalizing marijuana? Um, some of these other initiatives, which mm -hmm. I think are very valid. I don't agree with all of them, but I think the voters should have an opportunity to say, look, we think we ought to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm very disappointed that the, the principal argument has been against early childhood, that it's going to turn out more Democratic mm -hmm. voters, which I find shocking. Yeah. Okay. I think, okay. It's, I think it's interesting to I haven't heard it about note. early childhood development. I've heard it about the legalization of marijuana. But I've heard it about early childhood as well. It's, it's mm -hmm. hard to say, I think, at this point, the legalization of marijuana is a frivolous, a frivolous idea when there are states, sister states, yeah. that have, mm -hmm. in fact, passed it, that are implementing it. There are governors that are saying this has been good for our mm -hmm. state. We see that playing out in the crucible of democracy. That, are, that our states are. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I think is interesting to note is that in the past, these, um, these amendments had a 50-50 shot in front of the electorate. Whether our legislator ha legislature has become better at crafting them or mm -hmm. our electorate has become more trusting of the legislature, over the past 10 years, every amendment that has gone before the voters has passed and has become part of our Constitution. Mm -hmm. So certainly, to the points of both of, the, of my fellow panelists, it is incumbent on the legislature to really look closely at them because what we're seeing is that if they make it to the ballot, they do tend to pass. At I mean, least on over that, the last on that note, Sophie Martin, the use of these things to reverse things that people don't like. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. Is good for the goose, good for the gander. If somebody wants to put a an amendment out there to reverse same-sex marriage, is, you know, shouldn't the people decide on that as well? I mean, California tried that too to bring it's them up a, again, a, but... That's you know. a good question. <laughs> it, it, I, I will say for me mm -hmm. personally, I think that it is an unusual step to add to the Bill of Rights the reduction of rights. Right. So I'm, I will just put that out there. Um, but if it's able to pass the legislature, which I think is unlikely, mm -hmm. um, putting it before the electorate is the next step. Mm -hmm. Gene, I want to please. Just uh -huh. a, I don't think there's any of these issues that are frivolous. I don't know if anybody at the table actually mm -hmm. said that. I, they're mm -hmm. not frivolous issues. I mean, they're very, very important issues. Um, I do agree with Senator Ryan's approach of raising the bar for the number of people within the House of Representatives and the Senate. What would that solve in, in your mind? Well, it would it would show that that enough of our represented elect you know our elected officials truly believe that it needs to go to the voters. Okay. Um, I think it raises a standard on the city elections. It would maybe be more petition signatures in order to get it out there for yeah. a vote. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you really have to establish an overwhelming amount of support um, from the people in order to take it to a referendum like that and would you agree with um, that? that see that makes sense to me in a way does that number work does I think that it, solve it I think it does it because it effectively mm -hmm. it gives you it gives back the status quo which means for two-thirds is how you override a gubernatorial veto sure. so you essentially giving the veto back to the to the governor Here, here's the deal 10 okay. percent of bills pass in any given session mm -hmm. so it's very hard to get a constitutional amendment in a 30 or 60 day session through the legislature mm -hmm. so if if a you can actually get that done B, you get it on the ballot in the election, and you can convince 51% of voters that it's a good idea. That seems like, that sounds like democracy to me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like anything's being sort of railroaded or sort of nefariously done. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's valid. I mean, we at some point we've got to trust the public on uh, major on major issues to weigh in. And actually, they are a great tiebreaker. If we can't if we can't get 67% of folks in the legislature to agree, which by the way they don't agree on anything. Uh, no, on, that's on not true. Level. There's tons, no, I'm of, saying, I'm saying, tons two, of bills two that pass that are unanimous. I mean, look at, you know, Al Park's bill to um, end smoking in places of business and bars. You know, so there there are lots of initiatives that are before our our legislature that our legislators do come to agreement on, and those are, those are good policy decisions. And that's the other thing, too, about this. We keep focusing on this about whether or not it's the governor's veto, the governor's veto. It's not. It's a complete circumvention of all three branches of government when you take it for constitutional amendment. So it's not just about the governor or the governor's office. Mm -hmm. And again, I think if you're going to do that, if you're going to circumvent the entire process, our entire representative democracy, mm -hmm. and you're going to take the initiative direct to the people, it better be a pretty high standard to get it there in the first mm -hmm. place, which I think is more than... Let's see how the bill amendment. works its way through. That's an interesting point. Let's see mm -hmm. if uh, the rest agree. Like Eric's saying, it's a rare bird, but rare birds do fly sometimes. Let's see. <laughs> Up next, we talk with a former professor of New Mexico Tech about ice and climate change.